In the forests and canals of Kerala was born a little girl called Soraya. She was a child of the sun. A child for whom the twice yearly monsoons proved a terrible time. One year, as May approached and the rains threatened, Soraya could be found in the house of her grandmother, raging against nature's impending deluge. Her frustration was as heavy as the moisture-laden air. Her wails of indignation at the rain's imminent arrival, in stark contrast to the heavy silence that enveloped the jungle's foliage, flora and fauna. Holding a collective breath as Varsha, spirit of the rain, prepared once more to temper the fire of the sun with her cool embrace. Soraya's fury blinded her to the monsoon's life-giving properties. The moisture which lies dormant in the roots of plants during the height of the dry season is released as downpours assuage the fire of the soil. The world becomes a place of cool spice and languid heat, fostering the beginnings of life, love and the couplings of all creatures. But for Soraya, a curly-haired dervish, energized by the sun's golden rays, these times of rain meant nothing more than damp bedclothes, muddy puddles, and afternoons spent indoors, trapped by the curtains of water, which fell from the sky with no pause. Stamping her bare feet, she demanded an explanation for this trick of the seasons. And so her grandmother spoke. Without the monsoon's child, there is no life. The song of the Malibar Trogon, whose bright plumes you love, would be silenced. The canals long ago gouged by the axe of Lord Vishnu would dry to become dusty, salty grooves in the earth, depriving the red shorakani fish of the water it needs to survive. The red apple guavas, whose soft, sweet flesh you gobble, would wither on wizened brown branches. But still, Soraya was not convinced the rain was necessary. But it is the sun, Grandma, that brings life, she cried. The sun which makes the flowers open, the animals dance, and the sorghum crop seed. The sun that warms my skin and makes my smile grow wide. By now, Soraya's fists were clenched in irritation, her eyes brimming with angry tears. But Grandmother, old and wise, merely smiled in gentle sympathy at the impotent fury behind her granddaughter's impassioned words. Beckoning to little Soraya, Grandmother patted her lap with hands that had witnessed nearly a century of monsoon seasons. Let me whisper you a tale, she crooned in Soraya's ear as the little girl settled on her grandmother's knee. Long ago, before the birth of my grandmother and her mother before her, when our ancestors shared the forests with the gods, there came a shadow to our heavens, a demon, a giant serpent cursed with an unquenchable thirst, uncoiled itself in these skies. Desperate to douse the fire in his belly, he drank from clouds that had begun to fill in preparation for the monsoon season. He drank and drank until every drop of moisture was drained from the sky. Until the deep purple clouds, weighed down with water, were transformed into nothing more than pale, white wisps. Far below, in these very mangroves, the villagers suffered. Without Varsha, instigator of growth, the sun, once the giver of life, now brought nothing but drought and death. May turned to June, June to July, and still the rains failed. 
The Earth faced season upon season of unending drought as the demon continued to guard his watery bounty in a belly distended by years of stolen rain. The earth shriveled for lack of water, and our moist landscape became as parched as the serpent's scaly body had once been. Fish lay dead at the bottom of dry canals. The farmer's crops failed, and the sambar, leopards, and lion-tailed macaque monkeys, which once flourished, now lay stricken with dehydration under the dying canopies of cassia trees. Fearing they had angered Lord Indra, god of the rains, the villagers joined together in penance. Hoping to appeal to Indra's love of song and dance, they performed dramatic ragas for endless days and nights without cease. But months and years passed, and still not a drop of rain fell to cool the inflamed earth. Oh, Indra, the farmers cried dropping to their knees in defeat and supplication. What have we done to anger you? Lord Indra must have heard the despair in their cries, for without warning, he appeared before them in the skies. In a voice that rumbled like thunder, he told them of the serpent demon in the heavens, the demon whose unceasing thirst continued to siphon the monsoon rains from the sky. Lord Indra, they begged, you must help us. Vanquish the demon and allow the rains to fall once more. Pleased by their devotion, Lord Indra heeded their prayers, taking to the heavens to seek out the serpent demon. The ensuing days and nights brought terror to the villagers as a mighty battle raged above them. Fathers, mothers and children cowered under skies lit by Indra's powerful weaponry the cudgel Vajra, lightning bolts, which he aimed at the serpent's water-filled body. The skies grew black and the air heavy as slowly, slowly, the hissing, coiled demon tired and weakened under Lord Indra's relentless attack. Eventually, burdened with the weight of the world's monsoon rains, the demon could evade Indra's brilliant anger no longer. With one last sky-splitting strike, Indra flung the lightning bolt which would cleave in two the armored scales of the demon's underbelly. And finally, the rains fell. The first fat drops shook the earth. It was as if Mother Nature had heaved a great sigh of relief, released from an age of relentless dry heat and restored by a liquid energy at once cool and sultry. The rain-sweetened air was spiked with ginger. Deep in the ground, the dormant sorghum crops sprouted. Animals, so long silent, now fought to be heard over the joyous sound of hard-falling rain. All living beings were lit from within by the fire of life. Grandma trailed off, falling silent. Soraya smiled. Outside, the monsoon had begun. <laughs>